Uh, hello everyone, uh, my name is Martin and today I'm here to talk about Kotlin compatibility and overall about the compatibility of the Kotlin ecosystem. So, this is a chart from Google that explains a typical Android build. Can you tell how many Java versions are involved? Chances are uh, you can't or at least not in a reasonable amount of time. And to be honest, I am a bit the same, like I don't have the answer and I've been doing Java for almost 20 years now and I've been guilty of doing that for the vast majority of the time. Uh, this is not a quote from me, but this is a real quote. And this is bad, like we should all care about the compatibility of our software and of our tools because for once, if you are a library author, you want it to be compatible with as many users as possible. And if you are on the other side of the thing, if you are building apps, well, you are consuming libraries, and you want to understand when you get these weird errors about Kotlin metadata, or I don't know what. This makes sure that we can move the ecosystem together, like in the good direction, and most importantly, that we can use the best tools, the shiny new tools. Like if you were to bike to Copenhagen, you could use a bike like this, and it would somewhat work, I guess. But uh, you are much better using a real bike, like a much better tool for the job, where you can actually pack stuff and don't hurt your legs too much or some other part of your anatomy. So every time you're using Java 8, what you're doing is you're actually using this bike. Um, it has some style to it, don't get me wrong, but it's not the best tool for the job. So I'm going to do in this presentation a few recommendations, and the first one, uh, which is a bit of a odd take because it's in a lot of documentation, is to not use Java Toolchain. Every time you use a Java Toolchain, uh, what it's doing under the hood is it's downloading an older version of Java. So you already have one on your laptop, you're downloading, downloading a new one, and maybe, like if you have several projects, uh, two, three, several versions, and these are the old tools that don't benefit from the new garbage collector, the new performance improvement, and the new bug fixes. So you're going to say, uh, of course, but I need to share the same Java version with all my CI and developers. You can do that by forcing, like being very adamant about it, like putting some checks in your build files, maybe. Uh, this is a way to do it, it works. Since Gradle 8.13, you also have the opportunity to uh, use auto-provisioned daemon toolchains, uh, where Gradle will download automatically uh, the specified GVM for you. And hopefully, in the not too far future, we will be able to run Gradle without a GVM, and the GVM will be a dependency like the others. So if we don't use toolchain, what should we do? Uh, well, we are going to have a lot of fun with flags in the remaining of this presentation. Lots of flags, uh, you have the Java ones, uh, Kotlin ones, Android, and it looks like it's a few flags, but uh, in the order in which you define them and where to put them is always troubled me, and so I developed a passion for these flags. Let's start with a simple Java program. Not very interesting, uh, it's a function that uh, does stuff. Uh, it uses Java 8 method references. If you want to use this, you should make sure to use source compatibility 8 to be able to use the syntax, but also target compatibility 8 to be able to use the invoke dynamic, dynamic bytecode instruction, and more generally, the class file format that supports it. Uh, if you are curious about it, you can use your favorite Java decompiler, Java app. And you can see here that the class version is 52. Fun fact, if you remove 44 for, from this number, it works for any version of Java. You have the actual Java version, which is 8 in this case. So all good. Something else interesting here is uh, you have a local variable type inference, which was introduced in Java 10. So you could think of using source compatibility 10 and maybe hope that you can target lower version of Java with target compatibility 8, but that doesn't work because Java always wants your source compatibility to be lower than target compatibility. 
Why, why would you use something lower? I don't know, to be honest. If someone here has the answer, please uh, come see me after this talk. Uh, but you can cripple your uh, Java source file and make sure you do not use any new uh, syntax structure, I guess. And the last thing which is important is uh, there is a call here to remove first, which is an API from the Java standard lib. So like Kotlin, Java has a standard library. Unlike Kotlin, uh, it is bundled in the runtime. So if you use Java 21, you will have the Java 21 uh, runtime. It used to be called rt.jar. Now it's, it has a new, new name with uh, modules and so on. So you need to uh, make sure to, call, to configure your bootstra bootstrap class pass, sorry, uh, to make sure that your APIs are allowed and that the compiler is going to check that you are calling into the good Java standard library. Uh, if you don't do this, it will compile fine, but when you are going to execute your code, you will see a bunch of runtime errors, including this no such method error exception. So it's a lot to remember, right? Like you have source compatibility, target compatibility, uh, bootstrap class pass, which is hard to tell, to pronounce. Uh, so the good Java folks introduced release in Java 9, and it does all of that all at once. Uh, so you should use it. This is the second recommendation from this talk, if you are targeting Java, always use the release flag. But we are here for Kotlin, and if we are taking a look at uh, another simple Kotlin snippet, you can see it has whoops, sorry, a UID here. So Kotlin has a standard library uh, as well. It's not bundled, so you can upgrade it at runtime and it will work forever. You can compile against Kotlin 1.56 and use at runtime Kotlin 2, 2.1, and it's going to work really well. But you can still tell your compiler to check that all your API calls are valid using uh, API version. Uh, there is a trailing lambda here, which is pure syntax change, so it's the equivalent of source compatibility in Java, except in Kotlin, it's called language version. This was introduced in Kotlin 1.4, and here you have a context parameter, which was introduced experimentally in Kotlin 2.1, and is beta in 2.2. Um, Kotlin is cool because it merged the two flags, right? It, it's good. Uh, we don't have two, two flags, source and target. It's all one flag, which is langu language version. And what this does is uh, it writes some metadata inside your class file. So if you decompile your class file, you will see a 52 here, and you will see a bunch of uh, binary string in a metadata, metadata annotation. It's actually documented. You can go to the KDoc for uh, Kotlin.metadata. It's a GVM annotation that contains, again, uh, two arrays here data one, data two, uh, that contains binary data. These data are protobuf uh, defined in the Kotlin compiler, and which whose version is controlled by the language version. So here this is the latest stuff I think I took from the compiler. You can see uh, context parameters here. Yep. One cool stuff about Kotlin metadata is that the Kotlin compiler can read in the future. Uh, if you are using the Kotlin compiler 1.9, uh, you can actually read the metadata from 2.0. Obviously not use all the features, but you can still uh, be compatible with something compiled with 2.0. So you can set your language version to 2.0 and your API version to 1.9, and it will still work. Something that is not cool with metadata is that all your transitive compile dependencies also have metadata, and so you have to make a lot of care to not upgrade these dependencies too much, because this might end up being breaking changes to your consumers. Uh, here, if I use the previous, oops, sorry, this previous snippet, even though I specified API version 1.9, uh, and if I dump the dependency, I see I have stdlib standard lib 2.1. This is very surprising, right? This is because API version is only a check. It's not going to export a, a given version of the standard library. For this, you need to use another flag. So Kotlin has merged the two flags, source and target, but has two different flags for the API, if you're following me. Uh, and you need to make sure to use core library version to use the good version of the standard library. So sum uh, summarizing everything, if you're doing Kotlin, uh, you should always use the latest version of the Kotlin Gradle plugin and uh, do this use these compatibility flags. 
Of course, you're also targeting the GVM, so you must set a GVM target. And remember how I said to use the release flag, because the Java API you're using is very important. Uh, you can do that for the Kotlin compiler using minus x GDK release. Wow, that's a lot. But this is the third recommendation. Always use the latest AGP with flags. If you've done that before, uh, you notice uh, you will also need to configure the Java compiler for an obscure reason that we will see later if we have time. Now, let's move on to Android. So we, we've seen that the Java API you're using is really important, right? Because it defines what symbols you can use in your standard library. So for Android, what would you use? Like, what version of Java would you use? The answer is known, uh, because Android does not, Android versions do not match with Java versions. Android always contains a subset of a given Java version. So the way you do this on Android is using the compile SDK, which is going to pull the Android.jar, which you compile against. And similarly for GVM target, Android does not run a GVM at all. It runs uh, R, ART, which is the Android runtime, which runs uh, DEX bytecode, which is compiled by R8 and D8. And as it happens to be, uh, R8 and D8 can completely support Java 24. So I did the test just before this conference, and I was able to compile an Android app just targeting GVM uh, Java 24. So there's actually an argument that uh, you shouldn't target Java 24 there, but more like the lower version of Java, because it's going to do less work for R8 and D8. But more generally, any version should work, and the API calls are going to be disregarded anyways. In all cases, you should make sure to use lint uh, to catch any missing symbols. If you attended uh, Orima's talk earlier today, he has a very good explanation of why remove last uh, can become an issue on recent Android devices. Fourth recommendation, always use the latest AGP with flag. I guess at some point uh, you see a pattern here. Uh, same thing for Android, you also need to configure Java. So why the hell do we need to configure Java again? It turns out it's for two reasons. Uh, Android still has this build config file that uh, you know you can do your debug or release uh, thing there. Um, this is generated in Java. Uh, you can actually remove that uh, by enabling this Gradle property, enable build config as bytecode. And the other obscure reason why you need to configure Java for every Android build or any Kotlin build, really, even if you have no Java, is uh, because of Gradle publication. Like Gradle duplicates the class file from your uh, the class version from your class files into Gradle metadata used at dependency resolution. Why is it doing that? I don't know if you have the answer. Like, please uh, tell me after this presentation. But you can tell if you're, um, if you're writing an app and you don't care about publications that much, you can use kotlin.gvm.target.validation.mod equals in your, and uh, just forget about Java and just write Kotlin everywhere, and then have a happy Kodi. All right, so if we summarize, uh, we have uh, Java is relatively easy, always, uh, always use a release flag. Uh, for Kotlin, it gets a bit more involved, like you have Kotlin metadata used at compile time, and you need to make sure uh, to compile your API version, but also your core library version. If we wanted to go deep inside the Kotlin DSL, you can also configure options uh, on the task, but also in the Kotlin block, and you have some kind of hierarchy of options where, where you can compile per compilation unit, so it can go really deep. And for Android, you should not configure the release flag because Android has no Java version. It only has compiled SDK. Uh, but you still need to, to do all this stuff. So if you like having fun with flag, this is fine. Uh, you can uh, fall in this habit hole and have a lot of fun with it. If you don't, I've wrote a small plugin called Compat Patrouille. Uh, it's a pun in French. Uh, where you just give it uh, two versions and uh, it will do everything for you, uh, whatever plugins you apply. We're almost done. There is just one last thing, which is uh, I, I lied during most of this presentation. Uh, everything I did was uh, talk about was for GVM, and GVM is something, but if you're doing KMP, you don't have a jar anymore. You have a Klib. And as it turns out, since you don't have a jar, you don't have a GVM, you don't have GVM annotation either. So you can forget about metadata. 
And sadly, you can forget about language version. Uh, this is not supported yet by the Kotlin multi-platform ecosystem, Kotlin native. Uh, so if you bump your Kotlin Gradle plugin and you're releasing a native library, then uh, you're forcing all your users to use the same version of Kotlin, which can be a pain as more and more users uh, start using Kotlin multi-platform. So always leave a bit of room for your users to update at their own pace. A uh, few takeaways for you. Don't use Java toolchain, please stop. Uh, despite everything, everybody will, they can tell you stop doing that. Um, keep remembering this N plus one forward compatibility. This is not something that's very uh, common in the ecosystem, so it's, uh, it can be surprising, but it also gives more compatibility. And GVM target on Android. Uh, you can experiment with it, but it's not that important. And always use the latest tooling with compatibility flags. I was mainly the messenger today. Uh, there has been a lot of documentation on this topic, but also a lot of questions keep coming up on Slack, on the Kotlin Lang Slack, on the Gradle Slack. So I hope this presentation cleared things up a little bit. Thanks a lot to Alex, Ori, Mas, Jake, and all the others who wrote about it. And thanks a lot to you uh, for attending this presentation. Uh, I'm hoping to continue the discussion with you outside this room and have a good conference. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>